Hey, thanks for clicking on my video. Seb Heslow here. And today, we are gonna be overclocking this MSI GTX 1080 for Ethereum mining. So let me just put you down on my desk here so you can see what I'm doing. And let's get started. So, the very first thing I always do when I start overclocking is open up MSI Afterburner and I take the fan speed off auto and I put it at 80% and I can see the fan start spinning up there now so that's all good and what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna start my miner up which I'm using T-Rex miner today and while that sort of starts up I'm gonna be telling you about the three things that you need to keep in mind when overclocking so the number one thing is overclocking is done at your own risk you know we're doing things to these cards that the manufacturer did not intend for us to do so just keep that in mind overclocking is done at your own risk the second thing you need to keep in mind is that each card is unique so even though i might find some overclocking numbers here that work for me that doesn't mean those same numbers will work for you even if you might have the same exact version of the same exact card just due to the fact that each card is individual, each card is unique. Now, the third thing you need to keep in mind is that for me, what I'm gonna be doing today is I try to optimize for getting the highest stable hash rate that I can get out of these cards. You might wanna optimize for efficiency, as in the highest hash rate to power consumption ratio. That's up to you. But with all of that said, let's start overclocking. So, I always like to start up the miner without having touched anything, so just stock settings, just to see where the card kind of lands on its own. So as we can see here, we're getting around 21.54 mega hash a second on this 1080, right out of the gate with stock settings. However, one thing to keep in mind with these 1080 cards is that you can do a memory tweak on them. So it, how you do this differs in regards to which miner you're using. So for some of you, you might need to look into what's called uh, the ETH largement pill. For me, I'm using T-Rex miner, which means I can tweak the memory right in my miner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quit my miner and I'm gonna open the batch file. I'm gonna edit it and at the end here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put dash dash MT for memory tweak space and then it gives you the option to add a number between zero and six I believe it is. So the default setting is zero. So that is what it does to all cards if you don't change this setting. So what the developers behind T-Rex recommend is start by putting one and then slowly increase as you see, um, the, and, and, and stop at the highest number where the card is still stable. So I'm gonna start by putting one here. I'm gonna save this. And then I have to run my miner as an administrator. So I'm gonna do that. And let's see what that gets us. So you can see here now my um, 1080, it says here M tweak set to one. So we were getting around 21 and a half mega hash a second without the memory tweak so let's see what this brings us all right so we seem to have already landed at about one mega hash higher so we're at 32.46 mega hash now so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna quit the miner and i'm gonna open and edit my batch file again so what the developers behind t-rex recommends is that you do this in steps so you try one see if it's stable increase to two see if that's stable but now since i've done this for this card already i know that it is stable all the way up to six so i thought i would just save us both some time so i'm gonna apply memory tweak six right away and let's run this and let's see what we get all right, so we seem to have gained another mega hash or so. We're at 33.4 mega hash a second now. So 
Now let's jump back into MSI Afterburner and let's start actually overclocking the card. So what I always do when I start overclocking a card is I start by going to the memory clock and I pull that all the way down and I apply that just to see what happens, just to see how the card reacts. So I can immediately see that we're starting to lose some hash rate by doing that. So I'm going to bring the memory clock back up to zero again. And I'm just going to let that settle back to where it was before. All right, so we seem to have settled back in at 33.4 mega hash a second. So I'm going to start increasing the memory clock now instead. So what I usually do is I start by doing one big jump and then I take smaller incremental jumps from there. So let's start by putting plus 500 on our memory clock and see what we get from that. All right, so we seem to have settled in at around 36.68 mega hash a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one slightly big jump still. So I'm gonna do plus 600 and then we'll start doing smaller jumps from there. All right, so that doesn't seem to have done very much of anything. We're still at around 36.65 mega hash a second, but I'm gonna push it up another 100 to 700 and see what that gives us. All right, so that doesn't seem to have done very much of anything either. We're still at 36.67 mega hash. So what I'm gonna do is, since we didn't see any increase in hash rate from 500 to 700 on the memory clock, I'm gonna pull it back down to 500 for now. And we might revisit that later. And let's jump over to core clock instead. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do on the core clock is I'm gonna pull it all the way down now to negative 400 just to see what happens there. All right, so we're definitely losing hash rate because of that. So I'm gonna put that back to zero, let that settle back to where it was, and then we're gonna start increasing the core clock instead. So let's go plus 100 on the core clock and see what that brings us. All right, so our hash rate has started to climb again. We're at 37.31 mega hash a second now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep pushing our core clock up. However, I'm gonna do it in smaller increments now. So let's try 125 and let's see what that does. All right, so that doesn't seem to have done very much of anything at all. If anything, we lost about 0.02 mega hash a second. However, I'm gonna push it up even further, see what happens. So let's try 150. All right, so again, not very much happened. However, we didn't get a crash or anything like that either. So I'm gonna try 175. Let's see what that gives us. Oh, and we just seems to have had a crash here, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the core clock and I'm gonna dial it back two steps. So I'm gonna go back to 125. All right, so we're back at 37.34-ish mega hash again. So let's start increasing our memory clock again. So we pushed it up to 700 before. Let's do that again and see if that has, a, has any effect now that we've pushed our core clock up. So I'm gonna put it to 700 and let's see what we get. All right, so our hash rate actually did increase again now. So the core clock being higher allowed for the memory clock to have an effect there. So we're at 38.78 mega hash a second now. So I'm gonna keep pushing the memory clock up. So let's try 725, apply that. And I'm just gonna give it 30 seconds or so um, to see if we get a crash or anything like that. And if we don't, I'm gonna keep pushing the memory clock even further and I'm gonna do smaller jumps like that going forward now until we see a crash and then I'm gonna step it back by about 50. So yeah, no crash so far. So let's try 750, apply that, give it 30 seconds or so. All right, and we seem to be all good here. So let's try 775, apply that, give that 30 seconds or so. All right, so we still seem all good. So I'm gonna try and push 800 on the memory clock now. Apply that and give that 30 seconds or so, see if that's okay. All right, that seems fine as well. So I'm gonna push it another 25. So we're at 825 now. Let's apply that and see what we get. Give that 30 seconds or so. Again, yeah, that seems all good as well. So I'm gonna push 850 on our memory clock now. Yeah, that seems to be fine as well. So let's try 875, apply that, 
and that seems fine as well so let's try 900 yeah that seems fine as well so let's try 925 yeah that seems fine too so let's try 950 seems fine as well so let's try 975 and I'm still not getting any crashes there so let's just pull it all the way up to a thousand yeah so still no crash at memory clock pulled all the way up to plus a thousand however I've also noticed that we haven't really seen an improvement in hash rate for a while even though I've been pushing the memory clock so that leads me to believe that it might be the core clock limiting us again so I am curious I know we had a crash at was it plus 175 on the core clock. I am tempted to try and push the core clock again now that the memory clock is higher. Let's try it. Let's try 150 again and see what that gives us. Yeah, so that definitely increased our hash rate. We're at 39.15 mega hash a second now. So I'm gonna push it back to plus 175. However, I am expecting us to have it crash again there. And if, if it does crash again there, I'm just going to set it back to where it was at plus 125. And then we know that's the limit for the core clock. The safe limit. Anyway, yeah, I think we're having another crash. The power consumption here went down all the way to 62 all of a sudden. So let's just see what it says. Yeah, GPU is idle. So let's put it back at 125. Apply that and let's, let's give it a chance to wake back up again. All right, so it's back. And since we seem to be fine at 150 on the core clock, and we had a crash at 175, I am gonna put my core clock at 135. I'm gonna push it just a little bit more. And I'm gonna let that settle and see where it lands on, you know, hash rate wise. And then I'm gonna start dialing down the memory clock again, because I believe we had around the same hash rate at 800 as we do now at plus 1000 so there's no reason for the memory clock to be that high if it doesn't need to if it if that doesn't gain us anything when it comes to hash rate you know all right so we seem to have settled at just above 39 mega hash here so i'm gonna pull the memory clock down to 800 and i'm just gonna see if that has any negative effect on our hash rate so something i have noticed with overclocking this particular card is every time i change something the hash rate seems to take a little dip and then it sort of comes back to where it actually is supposed to be. So as you can see here now we're down to 38.19 mega hash a second. However, let's let's just give that another minute or two and let's see where where we actually end up. Yeah, so as you can see we're back up to 39.07 mega hash a second here now. So that leads me to believe the memory clock being at a thousand had no real effect and we might as well leave it at 800. I'm gonna try and push it down even further so I'm gonna put 700 now and let's see what that gives us. So yeah again hash rate's taken a dip now however I'm just gonna leave it and let's see if it goes back up to where it was at just above 39 mega hash a second. Alright so we're back at ever so slightly lower than we was. So we're at 39.03 mega hash now and we were up at 39.07 before. So I'm gonna put it at plus 750 and I'm just gonna be happy with that. I'm gonna just let that settle in and then we're gonna start moving our power limit. All right, so we're back at 39.09 mega hash a second now. So I'm gonna start pulling the power limit down and I have a power meter on the wall. It's currently reading to around 220 watts uh, but keep in mind that is for the whole computer not just the, the GPU so let's put 90% on our power limit apply that and so far it hasn't had any effect on our reading on the wall still at around 220 and let's take a look at our hash rate so it doesn't seem to have affected our hash rate either yeah, so our hash rate is still at just above 39 mega hash, so I'm gonna pull the power limit down to 80% now. Apply that and let's see what happens. All right, so immediately our reading on the wall went down by about 10 watts, so we're around just above 210 watts now. Let's see if it's had any effect on our hash rate. Yeah, and it seems like it has. We're at 38.92 mega hash a second now. 
However, I'm gonna give it just another minute or so to settle and let's see where we end up. Yeah, so we seem to have taken just a little bit of a hit to our mega hash. We've lost about half a mega hash or something like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the power limit at 85%. I'm gonna apply that and I'm gonna be happy with those numbers. So our final numbers there are 85% power limit plus 135 on our core clock plus 750 on our memory clock and of course I set the memory tweak in the T-Rex minor to 6 which was the highest number. Hey, so I was just editing this video and I realized I forgot to mention that of course after you've overclocked your um, card and you're happy with your settings, what you should always do is, you know, just let it run on those settings for, you know, a day, uh, two days, a week, and just look for, you know, is it getting the odd rejected share here and there? Is it crashing? And then adjust your settings down as applicable to that. And also, do you have a version of this card? If so, please leave your overclocking settings down in the comments and we could sort of build up a little database of, you know, uh, overclock settings. So that's it. Now back to the rest of the video. And yeah, I'm just gonna end the video there. Thank you so much for watching. And if you wouldn't mind giving the video one of these, I would really appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot more mining content coming up really soon. But until then, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye-bye.